Hey there, guys. This is Cole. Welcome back to another movie review. Uh, as you can see, I'm finally home from vacation, but that's besides the point. Uh, today I'm gonna be reviewing. Uh, today I'm gonna be reviewing the second movie in the in the Planet of the Apes trilogy, the the rebooted franchise. And not only is this my favorite Planet of the Apes movie, this is just one of my top 20 favorite movies. This is easily in my top 20 favorite movies of all time. Especially on rewatch, because I had not seen this in years. And that is Dawn of the Planet of the Apes. Now, now as a point of now, as a point of reference, this is not mine. I actually do not own this movie in my collection. In fact, a uh, funny story, uh, my mom is excited for uh, Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes as she saw the trailer, but she actually has not yet seen any of the previous movies. And I have the first movie on Blu-ray, but... And I have Rise of the Planet of the Apes on Blu-ray, but I don't have uh, this one or War for the Planet of the Apes. So when I go home to mom's tomorrow, yo, I'll be showing her these movies for the first time. And... Now, when it comes to my experience with Planet of the Apes, uh, my first exposure to Planet of the Apes was, of course, the reboot trilogy. That be, you know, of course, of course, that being Rise of the Planet of the Apes from 2011, this movie from 2014, and War for the Planet of the Apes from 2017. Uh, yeah, eventually, uh, now, eventually, years later, I did, uh, Years later, back in 2019, I did watch the original Planet of the Apes movie from 1968 with Charles Heston and the sequels to it and the 2001 Tim Burton remake. And uh, I know most people say, I know some people, diehard fans say the original is the best. And I do now, I do like the original movie from the 1960s. I think it's a good, I like the original movie from 1968. I think it's a good movie, but... But in my opinion, I just like this trilogy more, just because they give more depth of the characters and stuff like that. Uh, uh, like I said, I, I will someday I will review the older Planet of the Apes movies, but right now I'm mainly just sticking to reviewing the trilogy because we have the fourth movie coming out this May 10th. But uh, but yeah, this is easily one of my favorite movies of all time. Uh. Uh, yeah, I know. Almost three minutes in, I'm not into the reviews. So, so what's the plot? Okay, so what's the plot in the story to? Uh, okay, so what's the plot in story to Dawn of the Planet of the Apes? Well, so the basic. Okay, so the basic plot in story. So let's just get into the reviews. So, uh, let's get into my review of Dawn of the Planet of the Apes. So the movie start. Uh, so the movie starts off in the. Okay, so. The movie starts off it the movie it takes place it takes place in the year 2026. However, at the begin however at the beginning of the movie, basically what okay, so basically what happens at the beginning of this movie is we basically see a flashback uh where basically throughout this flashback, it's a bunch of people like a bunch of news anchors on the TV and stuff like that. And basically, and so basically, they're talking about, uh, so basically, so basically, there's this news going around that there's, so basically, there's a type of, vi there's, there's basically this type of virus that, you know, infected a lot of humanity and stuff like that. And so the basic plot in story is that, there's this disease going around and stuff like that that wiped out a lot of the population. However, when the apes took over Earth, a lot of humans went into hiding. And uh and yeah, it's uh so yeah, the basic plot and story to the movie is it is 2026. So the basic plot and story, it is 2026 and humanity has been pushed to near extinction by a deadly virus. When a group of survivors, desperate to find a new source of power, travels into the woods near San Francisco, they discover a highly evolved community of intelligent apes led by Caesar, uh, played by Andy Serkis. The two species form a fragile peace agreement, but dissection, or however you pronounce that, 
grows and the groups find themselves hurl hurtling towards an all-out war. So that's basically the plot and story to this movie. And and th this is a fantastic like this is a fantastic sequel. Now, do not get me wrong, the first movie, Rise of the Planet of the Apes, was good. But this movie, like the first movie, was good. But holy crap, is this is this much be much much better than the first movie? And I mean, the first movie was good, but this is much better. This is how you do a sequel, right? So, so let's get into it. So the movie start. Uh, of course, you know. Of course, the movie. Of course, we're given now. The movie starts off, and what I like about the way this movie starts is that at the beginning. Basically, at the beginning of the movie, we're basically at the beginning of the movie. We're given the backstory that that most of humanity, uh, it most of humanity is close to extinction because of the deadly virus, and that they've been hiding this whole time. And then after that, basically, what happens is that sees uh the whole group of apes led by Caesar, uh, the character you see, you know, here. And at the bottom, so Caesar, he's basically leading the group of apes and stuff like that. And the movie starts with our group of apes. And and basically they're trying and basically there's a bear and they're trying to hunt a bear, you know. You know, they're basically trying to hunt a bear in the woods and stuff like that. And uh and these apes are quite intelligent. Like like they ride horse, you know, like these apes are so intelligent. They can make weapons on their own and they know how to talk and stuff like that. Like that's how intelligent these apes are. And these a and these apes do not mess around, especially the villain Koba, which we will get to that. But so basically what happens is that uh is that Caesar, he's leading the group of apes, you know, they and and I like the part where one of the and I like the part where one of the apes jumps in the air and stabs uh, and stabs a, a wooden spear through the back of a bear killing it and then not too long after that in our movie uh and then not long after that we are and then not long after that we are introduced to our main character Malcolm played by uh uh played by Jason Clark and I like and I like Jason and I like Jason Clark as an actor. I think he's a pretty good actor. Uh, unfortunately, Jason Clark, while he is phenomenal in this movie and he's been pretty good in most movies, there have been a few roles that Jason Clark has gotten that hasn't been so great. But to me, Jason, to me, Jason Clark, he's one of those actors that even if the movie itself is not good, he's good in it. So that's a plus. And so basic and so getting back to it uh basically what happens is that one day uh, so getting back to it one day sorry about that but so basically after you know after they hunt down the bear and stuff like that uh we're introduced to we're once again introduced to Koba who Koba is the main villain of this movie and he was briefly in the first movie but he plays a major role in the second movie uh this one and basically what happens is that so so basically Caesar and all the other apes they basically go back to this uh giant hut they built like out of basically a giant fenced off area they built out of sticks kind of like their own shelter I guess you could say where you know basically their own shelter to uh, kind of like a wall to protect themselves from the humans basically because obviously they don't trust the humans and I mean to be perfectly honest I I do not blame them whatsoever. But getting uh but getting back to this, uh we're inter uh, we're introduced to Caesar's son and I thought Caesar's son was a rather good character in this movie and uh and I really and I in th another positive I have with this movie is Caesar is an excellent father figure to his kid. Like he basically tells the kid, you know, like he's trying to teach his kid responsibility and stuff like that. And uh, and I really appreciate that, you know, and Caesar and like I said, Caesar, he was a good character in Rise of the Planet of the Apes. But this movie is so good. Like, honestly, Caesar is so good in this movie. If I did a list of like my top 10 favorite movie characters, Caesar would easily be on that list. Like he is that good of a character. Now getting back to it, uh, 
basically what hap so basically what happens is that we get to another part of the movie where Co where basically we get to a part where Koba is talking to Caesar and and honestly and this part sets up a pretty big part of the movie like Koba like my gosh Koba he is one of the most intimidating movie villains of all time and so basically what happens is that you know Koba he's he's doing sign language talking to Caesar and and Co and Koba says the humans are bad they must pay and and we get a and we get a really good and we get a really good backstory about the character Koba. Like basically, basically what happens is that Koba he basically tell Koba he basically tells Caesar you know Koba he basically tells Caesar that he, he Koba admits to the fact to Caesar he says I hate humans I think humans are terrible and the reason he hates humans like he has a good motivation as to why he's a villain and like like you you totally understand where Koba's coming from because when Koba you know like when Koba was a kid like you know when Koba was a younger you know ape Koba was not you know Koba was treated really Koba was treated like abs like Koba was treated like absolute crap like he was you know People were torturing, you know, people did experiments on him. They tortured Koba and treated him like absolute crap his entire life. And for that reason alone, like that right there is a good reason and motivation to hate humans and want humans dead. Like you totally understand where the villain, again, you don't condone what he does, but like for that reason, you totally, like you totally understand why Koba hates the humans, like his motivation for why he wants the humans dead is so good and so well fleshed out in this movie. And not long after we're given that backstory, and not long after we're given that backstory, uh, we're introduced to, to we're introduced to two characters. Uh, Mel, uh, we're introduced to two characters named Malcolm and Ellie. And Malcolm is the character played by uh, Jason Clark, who. And I know this is kind of blurry. I know this is kind of blurry and hard to see, but you can see the shadow of him. He's basically the guy with the hat right there. I know that's kind of a bit crappy and blurry, but you know, uh, th that was kind of the best that I could get it to look. But Malcolm, once again, I thought Malcolm was a really good character, and uh, and so basically, we're at the part of the movie where the apes are in the woods and stuff like that, and uh, and uh. And our two and our two main characters, Malcolm and Ellie, and then you know the other characters, especially played by uh Carrie Russell, which is Kurt Russell's daughter. Yeah, she's in this movie, and uh, and the character played by uh Gary Oldman, and uh, this character right here. In fact, in fact, actually. This character you see right here, he's the first human that, you know, because like before then, the apes are talking about the fact that they haven't really seen any humans in a while and that maybe humans are gone. Well, the human I showed you on the cover who was holding the gun, he encounters Caesar and some of the other apes as well as the other group. And then Caesar, like Caesar is just looking at them, especially Koba, like all the apes are looking at them with their spears. And then Malcolm's, and then Malcolm, and then Malcolm gets the idea that maybe they, uh, because of how intimidating these apes are, Malcolm gets the idea that maybe we should put down, you know, like, maybe we should put down these guns and stuff like that, you know. And they set the guns down, of course, because it's the right thing to do. And basically, what happens is that Caesar, and then Caesar yells at them, "Go!" And like the human, like the humans are so shocked because. Malcolm, Ellie, and the whole group, they, and I repeat, they have never seen an ape talk at all. And then basically what happens is that uh, Malcolm and Ellie and the whole group, they basically get out of there. They go back because there's like this uh, guy at like a lab who's kind of like their boss, so to speak. They basically tell the boss that they saw the apes talk and like they said it was so shocking and it was nothing they had ever seen before. And he's like, I don't know what you saw, but that's impossible. Apes cannot talk and stuff like that. And then uh, and Malcolm's like, no, I'm telling you, that's what we really saw. I, I would not make this up to you and stuff like that. 
and then throughout the course of the movie, so, so basically, you know, so yeah, uh, so basically, at, so after that happened, uh, not too long after that happens, uh, we get, uh, we get to a part, so not too long after that happens, uh, we reach a part in the movie where Caesar, so basically we, basically we reach a part of the movie where Caesar, uh, Caesar actually has two sons. He has like a baby son and then like an older son and we'll get to that, but Basically, Malcolm and Ellie, they basically go to, like, the ape's hut and stuff like that, and, and base and basically, they, and basically, they see that, you know, and basically, they see that Caesar's son is sick and stuff like that, and, you know, with a disease, and then Ellie tries to convince Caesar, you know, hey, I got medication, it can help him out, and then Caesar says, I do not trust you. And then Malcolm says, I don't blame you, but look, not all humans are bad. I promise we'll help. And and, Mel and heck, there's even a part in the movie where Malcolm says, I got to show you something. And, and he shows the apes that he just wants the power restored a little bit just so, you know, they could do some work and that he means the apes no harm and stuff like that. But but of course, Koba, the main villain of the movie, he doesn't believe any of that. And he thinks it's all a bunch of BS. And like I said, and like I said, Koba is easily one of the best villains in any movie because, Co because like I said, Koba he has a he has a great motivation as to why he hates the humans because, like I said, he gives the backstory that when Koba was younger, that the humans, you know, the humans they that that the humans did experiments on him and they tortured him and treated him like absolute garbage. So. I do not blame Koba whatsoever for hating the human race and wanting them dead. Like, I do not blame Koba whatsoever. And then not too long after that, uh, we we basically reach a part of the movie. And not too long after that, we basically reach a part of the movie where uh where basically what happens is that uh is that the the character played by Gary Oldman is talking about how if the power goes out, uh he he's basically talking about you know the power going out is not a good thing at all because not only does it affect uh you know the lights but it affects everything else like the water supply and stuff and then everyone is like you know getting upset and stuff like that and then we get to a part and then we get to uh and then we get to our first part of the movie where remember uh now remember the part where now remember the part where I said where when Malcolm told, you know, his boss that and his other friends that that he saw Caesar and all the other apes talking, he didn't believe them. Well, basically what happens is that Caesar and the whole gang of apes show up on the backs of horses, which you can see on the back cover here, and then our main character Malcolm is standing there. And then the and then the ape and then we get to the part where Caesar talks and, and like it shocks the boss who didn't believe them. And then Caesar says, we do not want to start a war, but war will happen if necessary and stuff like that. And, and like, like, like the performance, like the performance by Andy Serkis and the motion capture is so good in this movie. Andy Serkis should have gotten an Oscar for this movie. Andy Serkis should have gotten an Oscar for best motion capture, but of course that BS did not happen. Which, if you're watching, if you're watching this Academy Awards, if you're watching this, screw you. You can screw you Academy Awards, but that's a whole rant for another day. But and then basically throughout the course of the movie, uh, we're basically shown how deadly of a villain Koba is and stuff like that. Uh, and and also, uh, and another part I like about this movie is Malcolm. He basically has a son in this movie and. And I like the part, and I like the part later in the movie where, because like I said, uh, some of the apes, you know, they, they know that not all humans are bad. And there's like an orangutan who's like a different species than the ape. And you can kind of see the orangutan here. Again, it's kind of crappy, blurry cover, not the best camera quality, but basically that orangutan, you know, he's basically sitting next to Malcolm's son and Malcolm is reading him a book and showing him pictures and, 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 and the ape is fascinated, and you know that was a nice little touching scene. And then base, and, and then basically what, and then basically what happens is that so basically what happens after all that shenanigans is 
uh, once again, uh, when we when we actually do get to see Koba as a villain, this guy is like a mean villain. Like, like he does not hold back whatsoever. Like, there's a part there's a part earlier in the movie where Koba he's just kind of messing around with some. Uh, he's just kind of doing some stuff that gets some security guards to laugh and stuff like that. And at first, he doesn't seem like that dangerous to them. And then, and what I like about the movie, and another aspect I like about this movie is that Koba, eventually Koba gets a hold of the weapons, like the, the machine guns, which does play a part in the movie, and we'll get to that. And Koba, he doesn't seem that dangerous at first, until, until we get to a part, I believe it's the halfway mark of the movie, maybe even a little before then, Koba basically takes the... Koba basically takes the machine gun and he kills two of the security guards. Like, like he is an intimidating villain that does not mess around whatsoever. And like, my gosh, like he is just intimidating. But anyways, getting back to it. Uh, and then we get to a part and then we get to the darkest part of the movie. So uh, then we get to a really dark part of the movie where we're basically so basically what happens is that uh basically Koba does not trust Caesar and stuff like that and and you know and bas and basically we re and basically we reach a part of the movie where Koba is sending a whole army of apes because he doesn't trust Caesar anymore and, and then there's a part at nighttime where where like Koba like Caesar does not uh Caesar does not die but like he he gets shot really bad by Koba with uh, with the AK-47. And then, like, the hut that the apes lived in is set on fire. And then Koba basically leads the group of apes to go attack the humans. And uh, and that, and Caesar's, uh, not the younger son, but, like, Caesar's older son, who's, like, not the same height as Caesar, but cl close to the same height. Uh, basically, Koba tells him, you know, to kill these humans and... But of course, his son he refuses. He's like no. He's like no. I'm not gonna do that. And then Koba just like yo know, beats up. You know, he basically beats up Caesar's son and he drags him up the stairs and uh and and stuff like that. And, like you really feel bad for him. And then ba and then basically we reach a part of the and then we reach a part of the movie where Ellie and Malcolm they basically find Caesar. They find out that he's not dead, that he's just been shot and injured badly. So they drive him through the forest, and funny enough, they dr they put him inside a house. And but like like I said, this movie takes place in the future. Like this movie takes place about uh ten to fifteen. The movie takes place over a decade after the events of the first movie. So of course, you know the house is overgrown with moss and trees and stuff, but. But basically, you know, uh, Malcolm and Ellie, they basically, basically what they do, they bring Caesar into the house and stuff like that. And then they find, and then they find a picture of Will, uh, the scientist of the first movie who was played by James Franco. Uh, and Caesar recognizes him by the picture and stuff like that. And then basically what ha and then basically we get to, and then at, not too long after, uh, not too long after that, we get to a part of the movie where Caesar's son, he basically, he basically finds out that, like, the apes are in these cages that, that was done by Koba and stuff like that. And then the orangutan tells Caesar's son, like, that this was Koba's fault, you know, uh, don't trust anyone and stuff like that. And then basically what happens is that, uh, Caesar's older son, he basically, go he basically goes to the house that Caesar is in and then he's about to attack the humans because he thinks the humans was responsible for hurting Caesar. And then Malcolm tells and then Malcolm tells them, no, we did not do that. That was Koba and stuff like that. And even Caesar says that. And then I like and I like the part where it's a nice bit of continuity tied to the previous movie where Caesar is watching a a, a videotape on the camera to when Caesar was like a baby where uh where Will, played by James Franco, is teaching him, you know, sign language, which which makes Caesar's heart warm. And that that was a nice touching moment of the movie. And then and then Malcolm asks him, who was that on the camera? And then Caesar says, A good man just like you. 
And then we get, and then we get to the epic, and then we get to the epic final battle of the movie, and then we get to the final battle of the movie where Caesar, he's on top of like this, uh, it, sort of metal railing type of thing, uh, uh, like platform structure. I don't really know how you describe it, but, but Caesar says, apes home. And, but then basically what happens is that Koba has like an AK-47. He says, apes strong together. Apes win war. Caesar weak. And then Caesar says, Koba is weaker. And then of course that upsets Koba. And it leads into an epic battle of the movie. And then eventually at the end of it, basically what... And then basically what happens at the end of the battle... Koba is, like, he's barely holding on to, like, a bar that looks like it's about to fall. You know, Caesar, you know, Caesar, like, at first we think Caesar's gonna help him up because he grabs Koba's, uh, hand, and, and, and Koba says, together we're strong, we are apes. And then I like the part where Caesar says, you are not ape. And then he drops Koba, and then Koba falls from, like, many stories high, and then he falls and dies. And then we and then we get to the end and then we get to the end of the movie where uh where basically Malcolm tells Caesar you, you know you got to get out of here and stuff like that you know or war's going to begin and Caesar's like war has already begun and stuff like that. And then he says goodbye to Malcolm and then the movie ends with Caesar and the whole group of apes leaving and it's the setup to the sequel War for the Planet of the Apes. So yeah. Uh all in all now all in all got so yeah, that was my review of Dawn of the Planet of the Apes and all in all guys, this is a this is a phenomenal movie. Like like I said, this is a phenomenal movie. Like this is e this is easily in my top 20 favorite movies of all time. Uh, guys, if you if you guys have never if you guys have never seen this movie, what are you doing? Get off get off this video and go watch this movie right now because this movie is an absolute mess. An absolute masterpiece. And on a scale of 1 to 10, I'm going to give Dawn of the Planet of the Apes a 10 out of 10. So yeah, thank you guys so much for watching my review and I'll see you guys later. Bye bye.